Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at some of the many ways that you can end up with no audio coming out of Cubase. Now as you probably are aware Cubase is a fairly complicated piece of software and as a result there are many ways that things can go wrong but in this video I'm going to try and go through some of the most common things I've seen over the years as to why you'd either get no audio out of your entire project or in the second part just to look at why you may get no audio out of tracks, which is maybe slightly less common and certainly less frustrating, but definitely is a problem which I've seen time and time again. So anyway, let's get started by looking at why you get nothing at all out of Cubase for a number of different reasons. So here we are in Cubase. I've got a little uh, toy project set up and if I press play, what you will see is nothing happening at all. There's nothing happening on the meters. And you think, well, there should be because we've got audio, we've got an instrument, etc. So this is sort of scenario number one. So typically, this means that you don't have a valid driver selected for your audio. So the way to fix this is to go to Studio and then Studio Setup. Click on audio system and then pick a driver. So here you can see I've intentionally sabotaged this by picking no driver. It is quite possible for you to end up like this, but also you may end up with a driver selected for audio hardware, which is no longer present for various reasons. So click on this menu and then pick the output that you want. I've got built-in audio, which is the built-in Mac audio. I've got multi-output device because on the Mac you can set multiple outputs to be one device. And I've got my Behringer external, which is the one I want. So picking this typically should fix the problem straight away. So if I pick that, you click switch because you do want to change. Click OK. And then with a bit of luck, that should fix you. You should be in business. So let's see if this now plays. So as you can see and hear, things are now working. We've got signal on the meters and we're hearing audio. Happy days. Now, there are other ways that things can go wrong, and we're going to take a look at some of those next. So here's a situation I've seen more than a few times. So when you play it, you're seeing output on all the meters. Everything is looking good, but we still have no audio. Now, Cubase in this particular incarnation is trying to give us a clue because the status line is present and audio outputs, it says, are not connected. So if we click here, we can see on the outputs tab, you'd open this window up. You can either open it up by going to audio outputs or you can go to studio and then audio connections. Either way, we'll get you to that window. You may have fewer tabs if you have a different version of Cubase, but outputs is where we're concerned with today. And as we can see, the audio device is not connected. So we need to click that, pick our hardware, and then pick appropriate outputs, which in this case is one and two. So if we just close that window, and play, we should be back in business. Now this next one is a variation on the one you've just seen. So this is typically only gonna happen where you've got a audio device where you've got more than two outputs. And in this particular case, yeah, I'm playing. Everything's looking good here. Our audio outputs are connected, so we should be in business, but somehow we haven't got any audio. So we need to look a bit further. So we're gonna click this to open up the audio connections dialog. And here we see the problem. So we've got this connected to outputs three and four because this particular piece of hardware has got four outputs. And output one and two are what we want because that's what we've got my capture connected to. So that will fix the problem. I've seen this quite a bit in studios, particularly where they've got multiple outputs, so maybe 24 outs, and the speaker's connection is not on output one and two. So the default typically Cubase will go, oh, I'll, I'll help you. I'll put it on outputs one and two, which normally makes sense. But if those aren't the outputs you're looking for, then you've got a problem. So make sure that they're connected and once more, we're fixed and back in business. So I'm going to start this section with a slightly controversial opinion, and that is that if you're working on a setup where you've just got a stereo output, that would follow in many laptop setups, many home studio setups, etc. but you've got a single stereo output that you monitor everything on. So 
essentially you're listening to the stereo output mix all the time. And in addition, you're not using any of the other features of Control Room, then often you are actually better off turning off Control Room. That's not to say that Control Room doesn't have something to offer you, but I've seen many cases over the years where simply turning Control Room off because people had no idea what it was or what it would do has fixed the issue and meant they can just get on with making music. So I say this isn't to say that Control Room doesn't have its uses. It's particularly useful if you're in a more complicated monitoring setup, but for many people, they don't even know that it exists and even if they do, they don't really want to use any of its features. So with that out of the way, let's take a look. Here we've got a situation where control room is on. All of our outputs seem okay because nothing's in orange, even though if you look closely, you can see the audio outputs are not connected, but the control room's connected, so we should be good. And yet we're not hearing anything. And this is the same thing that happened before, which is our outputs, in this case, control room output is out of out three and four the wrong ones. If our outputs had been set to one and two here, we would be in business. And then if we make use of any control room functions, we may have a problem if we start monitoring, etc. But generally, we would be good. Now, if you turn control room off, disable it, You may need to reset these appropriately depending on how you've had things rooted. So it's possible to, to lose the audio in a number of different fun ways when you've got control room on. It's also possible to lose it when you turn control room off. But generally, if you turn control room off and then set these outputs appropriately, you should be good to go and then hear in your audio once more. So that covers the most common situations I've seen where you end up with no output at all out of Cubase and you can't hear anything. But second to this are situations where you end up with nothing coming out of Cubase on a particular channel or set of channels. So here we're going to look at a few different ways that that can be the case, starting off with routing. So here we have the same project and this time it's failing in a different way. So when I play it, we can see the channel meters are all going nicely, but the stereo out is not going nicely. And as a result, we're hearing nothing. So the most common way this has happened in my experience has been that the routing of channels has been upset and isn't going anywhere. So if we click on an audio channel, there are three different places where we can set the output bus. We can set it in the inspector, we can set it in the channel settings window and we can set it in the mixer. So let's look at all three and then you'll be able to use the appropriate one when the time comes. So firstly, in the inspector, in the top section of the inspector, which you can expand by clicking here, we can see we've got no bus. We should be sending this to stereo out. So if we send that to stereo out, now we can hear those. Now, there are other places we can do that. So I'm just going to put that back to no bus and we'll look at them as well. So first of which channel settings window, which we can click the E to open it up. And in the top section here, we can see it says no target, which is slightly confusing. It probably should say no bus, but there we go. It says no bus as soon as you open that up. And if we go to stereo out, that will fix it. Let's pop it back onto no bus and it says no target. And the final area is in the mixer. So if we open up the mixer, we can see in the racks section here, we can get to routing. Now, if racks isn't available, you can just click the little cog in a box and make sure channel racks is turned on here. Expand the routing section just by clicking on the header, and then we can pick the output here. So again, we'll pick stereo out. This is exactly the same thing. In fact, you can see over there that changes when I change this. So it changes to no bus because it's exactly the same control, just in a different place. But all three of those ways will fix this, depending on which one's the most convenient for you. Now we need to fix our drums. Now, when we go to our drums here, because it's an instrument track, we don't see the output there, but we can still see it on the channel settings window and in the mixer. And we can see that's being sent to a drum group. So let's go to that output. So we'll just click the go to output button here. And here we've got exactly the same problem with no target. So we just need to send that to the stereo out. And now our group channel for our drums 
is also going to the output. So it's the same problem in different places. So there's a number of different places that can happen. Now, I just want to take a quick aside and show you how you can end up in that situation. So there's a problem with undoing creation of groups. So here we've got our audio track here, and I'm going to add a group to it. I realize that's superfluous because it's only the one track, but there we go. So if I add a group channel to this one, and I'll call it audio group for no good reason. So we can see that our audio is going to audio group. Now, if I undo the creation of that, so I'm just going to do undo, you can see the group has gone, but our audio track has not been set back to the output that it was. So we end up with no bus. So this is the most common reason I've seen people do this. They create a group and then go, oh no, I didn't want to do that. And then you end up with no bus. And now our audio track is back to not playing. So that's the most common way I've seen of ending up like that. And routing is the most common reason I've seen of losing tracks within Cubase and then not being playing anymore. So that will probably cover 90% of situations where you're not hearing a track. But in the next section of the video, I'm just going to look very briefly at other ways that you can lose your audio. So here we are in a situation where we can see one track but not another. And we can see here's the problem. It's definitely within this track because we've got nothing on the channel meter and the channel meter should be showing us what's coming out of a track. So let's just dig in a little bit further. Typically, open the channel settings window and it will normally be an insert effect that's the problem and you can bypass all of them with the button here. And we can tell we've narrowed it down because as soon as we unbypass them, there's the problem. These issues typically fall into two camps as far as I've seen. First one will be dynamic effects. So in this case, I've got a totally inappropriate effect on here, a gate. It's not really the kind of track you would want a gate. Uh, and the, the level is set too high. So the threshold is at zero. The track is never reaching zero. So we can see here its maximum is minus 11. And this gate is set way too high. If we just turn this down. We can see it's starting to work. But in this particular case, a gate isn't really an effect that I think is appropriate in this case. Although maybe some other kind of gate, such as a MIDI driven gate, would be. Now, this brings us on to the next situation, which I've seen fairly commonly, which is something such as a vocoder. So I'll turn the gate off. And again, we've got the vocoder on here. This isn't working. We can see the signal coming in, but it's not working because we're not sending any MIDI to this particular effect. And without MIDI, it's not going to let that audio through. So something such as a MIDI gate, etc., that kind of thing. Anything where you're not feeding it the right kind of signal to get it going, that's where you'll see some problems. Now, this is a fairly open-ended part of the video, which is why I've left it at the end, because there are a near infinite number of ways that you can lose your audio signal as a result. So you've just got to be methodical about this. Go through, find out which effect is causing the problem, etc. Sometimes it will be because of sidechain settings. So maybe you've got your gate set appropriately, but maybe you've got the sidechain turned on. And as a result, it's not... So you can see here, even if we turn this down, because we're not seeing any signal on the side chain, it never gets triggered. So you could turn this all the way down and go, why isn't this working, etc. So side chain can be a problem. Something where you're triggering externally from MIDI can be a problem, etc. You'll need to be methodical. Eventually you'll find it. There is also one other issue. Occasionally you may find that you have an instrument track which won't play unless you solo it. And if you solo it, it will play. There is a long-standing but hard to find bug in Cubase where this will happen. I've seen this happen probably 50 times over, over the many years I've been using uh, this particular incarnation of Cubase. But it's not something I've ever been able to reproduce. So it's not something that's going to get fixed particularly quickly, hence it being around for this long. But if you're ever in a situation where when you solo the track, it plays, and when you unsolo it, it stops playing, and you've checked everything else and nothing else seems to be a problem, what you need to do is to just give up on that track, duplicate the instrument, and then copy the data across because there's something that happens, say, occasionally, but obviously with 
a load of you watching this video, it will happen to one of you at some point in the next six months where you'll find this and it just won't work. And I pulled my hair out for ages with this, but I've never been able to reproduce it. But the way around it, unfortunately, is to duplicate or make a new instrument track with the same settings and then copy the data over. If you duplicate the track, sometimes it works, often it doesn't. So there's something about the track itself. Hopefully this has covered most of the ways in which you can end up with no audio, although I appreciate there will no doubt be corner and edge cases where it's like, oh, I've done this, I've done this, and I still can't find it, etc. But I think this video has probably covered the vast majority of ways in which people end up with no audio, either out of their whole project or out of a particular track. As ever, I hope you found this video useful, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.